Yo, what's up guys, the Insane Game Freak here, here to bring you another Emmy review. And now, we are reviewing Hanagi. I don't have that many friends. I know it's Japanese title, it's something really, really complicated and ridiculous. Um, I finished this literally in two days, so now we're going to talk about it. Yay! I mean, honestly, what Hanagi is, is it's, it's a series that has the premise of something similar to Snafu, but it takes the harem cliched route of it. Our main character is Kodaka, that's our main male character. Our two leading females are Yozura and Senna. Yozura, uh, Kodaka catches Yozura talking to herself. Yozura's like, I want to start a club so people can make friends because neither of them have friends. Yozura starts a club called the Neighbors Club, which the whole purpose of the club is to make friends. It's her and Kodaka, and then everybody else just join. Now, I have no problems with it. It's a Funimation dubs, and so I have no problems with it. That's just how it is off the bat. Like, fun, I, come on, it's Funimation. Like, it's just, just, just the idea that Funimation doesn't do, at the very least, competent dubs is just kind of beyond belief for me, so... Uh, I think Jerry Jewell is, is playing Kodaka, and a lot of people, you could argue, the trailers kind of misplay him, because in the trailers he sounds really monotone. In the anime, it works a lot better. Like, I feel like the trailer doesn't represent his voice, because I know a lot of people are complaining about that, but Jerry Jewell as Kodaka works. Um, they're also using a few new voice actors I'm not aware, I'm not really sure of who, who they are, either that or I just haven't heard that much stuff with them in it. But in terms of the dub, everything is cool. Now, I'm gonna com I'm gonna be comparing the show to Snafu a lot, and I'm also gonna be comparing the show to Cat Planet Cutie a lot for different reasons. You'll understand as we go along. Now, the reason why I'm comparing this to Cat Planet Cutie is because it's one of those animes where it's it's not like it's not bad, but it doesn't necessarily grab me. Like I put like if anyone's seen my Cat Planet Cutie's review, which I'll have links somewhere so you can check it out. My, it was almost the same thing, where it's like, I, I didn't hate the anime, but I didn't, I didn't fall in love with it either. That's kind of how Nagi is. It, I, I was kind of more disappointed with it than I was, because, I, maybe it's because Snafu is a series that spoiled me, because it has a similar premise. The difference is that in Snafu, Hikigai chooses to be a loner, because he got burned so many times in his childhood, whereas in Hanagi, Kodaka is, is being ostracized because... They do the Toradora thing where he looks like he's a mean guy, but he really isn't a mean guy. It's that logic. That's why he doesn't have any friends. Also, by the way, the other thing that kind of sucks about this anime is that even though the club that they're in, which is the club that started from the first episode, so they're doing club stuff the entire series. Kodaka's the only character in that, ser in that entire in that club that actually makes any effort to try to make friends. Like, he's the only one that would take the things they do in the club and try to apply it. And he only does that, like, once or twice. The rest of the time, it's exactly, oh, we just created a club and we're just going to be... It's kind of like the anime is not... And what kills me is the anime is obviously going that whole route of they end up becoming friends through creating a club to, to make friends. That's, like, the irony of the situation. The problem is is that by the end of the first season, they don't even come to that conclusion, in which case, pretty much all you're watching is a whole bunch of random events unfolding. The other thing that kind of ruins, that makes this show not as enjoyable, is that there really isn't any development um, at all. The only development you could argue is, is maybe Kodaka, and not really, none of these characters change as people. Like, none of these characters grow from their, from their natural selves to, be, to a more sociable selves. Like, Nothing changes about any of these characters, except maybe like one, and it's not even for like a character development reason, more as it's a more of a realization of anything else. The other, and, and, and as I said, Snafu kind of spoiled me because I kind of wish we had saw at least for any some. Of the Kodoka is like the only character we inherently know why he's ostracized. We have no idea why. We, we pretty much you're in. You just have to imply. It's, it's like you, you have to come up with the reasoning based on what the anime is giving you for any of the other characters. Like, for example, Yozura is like a dominatrix. She's a very, like, she's, she's a bitchy tsundere. That's all she is. Senna is a, con, is, is a conceited, naive, uh, yeah, she's like a, a conceited ditz. She's a spoiled brat. That's the best way to describe it. Uh, Rika is a pervert. Uh, Maria is an underage... Nurse, I don't, not nurse, nun. Kobato is like 
into this vampire show, Yukimura is just this shy kid. But, like, there's no... Like, they never address any of these characters. Half of these characters don't even really get episodes devoted to them. Like, for example... Yukimura's introduction is like the only time they really focus on Yukimura. Because Yukimura doesn't really do anything. There's no development in this anime whatsoever to me, personally. Like, if you're watching Hanagi, you're not watching it for any type of character development or change. You're watching it because you just find the situations hilarious. Now, granted, I will agree there because I do I, I will say in terms of the lolly characters, I don't know why I love the interactions between Maria and Kobato with the whole vampire versus nun thing. I thought that was funny. I even I love both of their voice actors actually. Uh, Maria actually does act like a little child, calling people duty heads and whatnot. And Kobato's whole "I'm the princess of the night." They and they do make a Twilight reference because I I guess I don't know what it is like. When I mention dubs, if you have vampires, they, they, there seems to be these small Twilight references they put in. To make it, you know, more American relatable, which is cool because I enjoy that. Um, I did enjoy Rika for the her ridiculousness, and it's funny because she's voiced by I don't know the girl's name off the top of my head, but she's the same girl who voices Musubi in the Sekere dub. Uh, Yuki Moore is borderline useless. As I said, he's the trap character who might be. He almost blatantly admits that he's gay in, in, in one of these epi in a few of these episodes. Also, speaking of that, I have never run across an anime where there have been so many characters to call the main guy uh, uh, Onichan. I sw there's three characters in this anime that call Kodaka Onichan or Big Brother. It's Yukimura, Kobato, and Maria. Now the two lolly characters made sense. The the trap character, I'm just like, oh god. It's ridiculous, and obviously this is going into the harem genre because that's really what it boils down to. Each each of these characters have an affection for the main character. They just don't make it as obvious as other harems would make it, but it's it's still obvious if you're you, if you know how harems work. It's kind of obvious. It's like I mean, look at look. You could look at the cover of this and go, oh, it's probably a harem. Just like looking at it, and I didn't, and I I, I figured that was going to be the case. But they don't really spend any time developing the characters, and Kodaka for himself doesn't really act like a meme barely at all. Uh, what are the one of the gags I haven't mentioned yet is the gag between Senna and uh, Yozura, where they pretty much argue all the time, and the gag usually works with her being a bitch to Senna, Senna crying about it and running out the room, and then coming back like a five-year-old having a sense of arrogance even though she just embarrassed herself like five seconds earlier and they're always competing with each other it's like the typical two-man girl rivalry and it's actually a gag in two different ways it's a gag in itself and it's a gag that everybody else in the group just ignores them when they do that it happens like three times that happens multiple times in the anime but there's only like three big situations where it happens but it's a, a running gag within itself that's the other thing. Yoser is, like, that's the only guy I'm not really a f fond of because it's, it, it makes both of the characters still seem very one-dimensional and stupid. Um, and it's not like my harems need to be anything ridiculously deep, but it's like, Kodaka doesn't even do the cliche stuff. He does it, like, maybe twice. I think there are two sections in this anime where he does the shonen thing or he does the cliche harem lead character thing. Other than that, he's just kind of like, he, he doesn't give a fuck. Um, and, and, and it's funny because the one scene he does it is, is the scene that starts uh, one of the crushes for the girls. It's just, uh, at the end of the day, if you're watching Hanagi, you're not, you're not really going into this looking for a ridiculously great story. Or even a, like a well-told story. You're going into this for entertainment value and probably fan service. Uh, the fan service is actually fairly toned down. There's like maybe like a few fan service scenes. There's more talk of fan service and like sexual scenes than actually a showing of sexual scenes. And you can blame Rika for that. Also, the fact that Rika refers to herself in the third person, well, I don't know why I find that kind of funny. Um, it, it's I, At the end of the day, it's enjoyable. I think it's better than Captain the Cuties. I just don't put it on like a high level. Like... It's entertaining, but it's not like, oh my god, you need to watch this entertaining. It's not like one of those harems where I'm like, you should really watch this. But I will say it did throw in some interesting concepts. 
It made the Lolly characters entertaining, which usually they're not. They're usually on this whole innocent, stupid, only time BS, like how Ku is from freaking uh, uh, Sekere. Like, they always do these little girl characters where they're all like Oni Chan, but they're like stupid. I do like the fact that you gave me this, the, you know, obviously the, the little sister complex and then the, the I'm a lolly character and they just argue with each other. I like that rivalry, but the main two girls, eh, it's not really funny. Also, as I said, it just, it's more disappointing because of what the premise is. Like, when I've seen shows like Snafu take a similar premise and make it gold, it just kind of disappoints me that the ham version of it is not even taken nearly... It's not even taken to the standard I would hold a harem version of that kind of plot. I would at least think they would go through the characters' issues, each of their, each, each of their issues, but it's just kind of like the, it's their character traits and you're just implied that this is the issue. I, I, overall, it's fine. Uh, I, I don't, I'll put it this way, I don't regret paying for it. I think it was still enjoyable. I watched it in two days, and it, I didn't really hate it. I didn't hate the anime by any means. I'm kind of hoping the second season isn't, I'm hoping the second season expands. Also, just one other thing that annoys me. The two uh, clip trailers that uh, Funimation showed for this show on their uh, YouTube channel are from, like, the first two episodes. Let me just warn you right now. There are too many fucking video game episodes in this up in this series. I think like in the in the thirteen series, and the thirteen being the OVA, out of the entire series, I think there's like maybe four or five episodes that have something to do with some type of video game. Because I know there's one of the dating sims. I know there's one of that like Final Fantasy ripoff, the Monster Hunter ripoff, and then they and then like the it's not really a video game, but it might as well it feels like one like. There's too many, vi like, just, uh, too many video game stuff in the beginning. That was not, it's enjoyable to an extent, but when you keep, it, like, if they put all that in one episode, I probably wouldn't have had a problem with it. But it's like three different episodes based around video games, and I'm like, this is kind of dumb because they're using the same gags. Like, oh, look, Senna, Senna killed Yosura, so obviously Yosura gets her revenge when she comes back to life and she kills Senna. Oh, they hate each other. And then you just, and then you have to do the obvious male, main character, main male character is useless BS. It's like, I don't want to see that for three separate episodes using the video game motif, just parroting different video games. Like, there's a Monster Hunter one, Final Fantasy one, and then obviously the dating sim one. Like, eh. But uh, that's pretty much my thoughts and opinions on Anagi. So please leave yours in the comment section below. Uh, I will leave a link to watch and to buy this in the description. Um, so, yeah. This has been the Insane Game Freak. Life's a game. Play to win. Uh, season 2 probably won't be dubbed until next year. And I'll probably pick that up too. Um, and, yeah. I don't have that many friends. <laughs> Join the neighbors club. <laughs> Peace out.